Good morning, friends in Christ. We are glad that you're joining us on this Friday morning for our Mount Olive Live Facebook devotions as we continue to spend time growing in the Word together as God continues to do a work in us. And so we're glad that you're joining us this Friday morning. Welcome, and we are glad to be able to spend this time together in God's Word as we know that God continues to be on the move and continues to do His good and gracious will in our lives. And so this morning we're going to ask you to take out your Bibles and turn to Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 18. And so we are in the prophet Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 18. In the Old Testament, we see God's history with his people, his chosen people, Israel, and that through Israel is going to come the Messiah, the Savior of the world. In the Old Testament, we see pictures throughout history. God paints pictures for us and visual pictures for us to learn and to understand, and also at times to get our attention. In the New Testament, we get principles. And so we see a beautiful Old Testament picture today in Jeremiah chapter 18. And so once you get to Jeremiah chapter 18, you can go and hit the share button. As we continue to be on a mission from God to build believers, to reach out and connect people to Jesus. Jeremiah is this Israelite priest, this prophet, and he is speaking words of warning and caution to the southern kingdom of Judah. The northern kingdom has already been destroyed 722 B.C. by the Assyrians. And now, as Jeremiah is in Jerusalem, the capital city of the southern kingdom of Judah, Babylon is on its way. And if God's people don't repent and turn back to him, destructions come in their way. And so Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet um, because he's weeping over Jerusalem and over Judah because the people aren't listening and he knows the destruction is going to come. And that is what's going to happen, is that the people are not going to listen to him. They're not going to listen to the Lord. Destruction is going to come. But the good news that is that even through their unfaithfulness and the destruction of Babylon, God will still fulfill his promises to Israel and to the whole world. And that's what we're going to see today. We're going to see a, a field trip. For some, it is the last day of school uh, this week, and so today we look at a field trip in Jeremiah chapter 18, <clears throat> beginning at verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. And so this is how the relationship between God and his prophets go. God tells them exactly what he wants them to do and what he wants them to say and they are servants of the lord and they carry out the lord's work and so when they are speaking the words of god they are god's mouthpiece and when they are doing the certain actions that he's calling them to do they are doing exactly what god is instructing them to do the instructions here are clear he tells jeremiah arise get up go down to the potter's house and there i'm going to speak to you and you will hear my words. And so, Jeremiah, get up and go. Go to the potter's house. Verse 3. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. And so Jeremiah walks into the potter's house, and there the potter is working on his wheel. I don't know if you ever had a pottery class in school. <coughs> I remember having pottery class in high school. And I remember the first time I was on the wheel and took out that piece of clay and some moisture and was working it with my hands. And I just uh, remember that um, some were truly gifted to do it. And they made some beautiful pots out of that clay. There were some that they were like, okay. And then there was my pot. It didn't look very good at all. And so as Jeremiah walks in, this is what the potter does. And so he is gifted to be able to do it. It's his vocation, knows what he does. And as Jeremiah walks into the potter's house, there he is, working with this clay on the wheel. And so this is the image and the picture and the experience that God is providing for Jeremiah and also for us today to be able to learn and to grow. 
And so there he was working at his wheel, and the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand. And so the clay he's working with, it's spoiled. It's nasty. Um, on Tuesday, you know, Pastor Jordan was talking about things that were disgusting. Well, here's what's disgusting is that the clay is spoiled. And so it has a smell to it. It looks awful. And it's in the potter's hand. And it doesn't look anything like beautiful art. It actually looks like something that should probably be disposed of and thrown away. And that's what Jeremiah sees. And then it goes on to say, And he reworked it into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to do. And so what's the image in the picture here, God is saying? Even though Israel is broken, even though they're spoiled, even though my people are unfaithful to me, and they've wandered away from me, and that they're at the lowest of lows, I'm not going to give up on them. I can still take this broken nation, these broken people who are far from me, and even though they're spoiled, and they should probably be disposed of, that's not how I'm going to do it. I am the Almighty, the Lord, and I'm going to rework it. And so he's going to be able to rework the clay. Because why? It seemed good for the potter to do. That's the goodness of our God. He is faithful. He keeps his promises. He always keeps his word. And he doesn't give up on us. He continues to pursue his people. Even when his people aren't pursuing him. And that's the wonderful promise of the Lord. Why? Because it seems good for the potter to do. God loves his children. He loves his children. Verse 5. Then the word of the Lord came to me. And so that's always a key verse when it comes to the prophet. The word of the Lord coming to him. And so this isn't me saying it. This is God saying it. And the word of the Lord came to me. Verse 6. O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter has done, declares the Lord? Behold, like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. The beautiful picture here of what the potter does with the broken, spoiled clay, of how he's going to rework it, because that's the goodness of the potter, of the creator, and how he is our our Father in heaven, <clears throat> and how he loves his children. And then look there at that imagery that we are in his hands. And so I remember, you know, in Lutheran grade school or in Sunday school, singing about how God's got the whole world in his hands. And he does. And not only as the creator does he have the whole world in his hands, but he has you and me in his hands. And so it's one thing to think about that on a global perspective, but what's important is that we see that from a personal perspective of who we are, that we are the Lord's child, and that he holds us faithfully in his hand, and that he is doing a work in us, just as he did a work through Israel. And so he's the potter, we're the clay. And so what is the Lord doing with us in his hands every day? He is providing for us, he's protecting us, but he's also He's molding and shaping us. And so he's working that clay, and he's working you, and he's working me. And every day we are a work in progress. And even though some people may see our brokenness, they may see some of the sins and the things we've done, and they see that we spoil and that we stink, that's not what the Lord sees. The Lord sees us as his children, and that he knows what the finished product is going to be. And that he is fashioning us, working through the good things of our life and even the bad things of our life to mold it together and to shape us. And so we are in his hands and he is forming us. Now there's parts of that forming process that are beautiful. And there are some that are messy. And there's some part of those processes that even looks like, oh, the potter made a mistake and it's not going to work out. It's ruined. Just throw the clay away. Start over. That's not the view of the Lord, and that's not what God does. God says, nope, I haven't made a mistake. No, I don't make those mistakes. I'm perfect. I'm the Almighty. I'm molding it and shaping it just the way that I want it to be for my glory because I love my children. And so every day we continue to learn and to grow and to be molded and shaped by the Lord. 
in the New Testament says, for we are God's craftsmanship, his workmanship, created by the Lord to do good works for his kingdom that he already knew about long before. And so today, as a child of God, know that you are a work in progress and that God is molding and shaping you, but you are in his faithful hands. And he promises to love you, to do life with you, and he's continuing to mold and shape you to be everything that he has created you to be. And he knows the finished product. And so don't be hard on yourself. Give yourself that grace that the Lord gives you, that unconditional love. Love yourself the way that Jesus loves you. And that know that you are a work in progress. He's molding and shaping you. You're not a finished product yet. And as he's molding and shaping you, he has kingdom work for us to do. That when people see us, they see the molding and the shaping and the progress that God is making in our life. And it draws them to the creator, to the potter. And so as we go forth today, we go forth in the hands of a faithful creator, a faithful Lord who loved us and died for us and gives us victory and the one who continues to form and shape us as his wonderful clay. What a beautiful image and a beautiful field trip experience that Jeremiah got to see and that we get to see God working and molding and shaping us every day in our life. We bow our heads to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, you are the potter, we are the clay, and we are thankful for that intimate relationship through the power of your touch. You have touched us in the washing waters of holy baptism. You touched us and you created us in our mother's womb, and you continue to touch us by the power of your Holy Spirit that lives in us. And every week in and week out, Lord, we're able to come to your table to receive your body and blood, and you touch us in a personal way to give us that assurance that our sins are forgiven and that we are saved for your purpose to be about your kingdom work. And so, Lord, we're thankful we're in your faithful hands. Continue to hold us, to love on us, and to mold us and shape us, to do a work in us and through us for your kingdom's glory. And all God's people said, amen. Friends in Christ, have a blessed Friday, and we look forward to seeing you on Sunday with worship services at 8, 9, and 10.30. If you're out of town, the 9 o'clock service is on our Mount Olive Facebook page and our YouTube channel. As we kick off a new sermon series for the summer this weekend, Ask Anything, as we're going to look at the difficult questions that Christians and non-Christians have when it comes to the Bible, when it comes to faith, when it comes to life, and you will have the opportunity to be able to ask questions too. And we will tackle those questions week in and week out through the summer. God's blessings, and we'll see you on Sunday.